Hey Star Wars Black Series action figure fans, we've got Wrecker here from Season 2 of The Bad Batch in his mercenary gear. This is uh, the next one in this week's series, doing a, a few, few of these uh, Bad Batch crew this week. I uh, finally just picked them up, um, so yeah, I'm very excited to be sharing Wrecker. He is my favourite member of The Bad Batch. He's just, um, I don't know, I just like his personality, I think he's funny. And... Um, yeah, coming in at 6.6 .6 inches or 16.8 centimeters, as per the side of the box there. So it's far stronger than the average clone. Wrecker barrels through any obstacle thrown his way. He's also the resident demolitions expert, a job he performs with much enthusiasm. He's number 14. They're coming in just before Hunter, which I just previously reviewed. We've got Echo and Tech to come. And Omega at some point in the near future as she is released at a different time, not sure why. But uh, yeah, we're gonna take a look at the figure and hang around towards, after the, this one, we're gonna do a little bit of comparison with his season one variation of figure that came out. Um, I did the same with Hunter and I'm gonna be doing the same with the others, just a bit of a side by side, but we'll see how things are different because um, Hasbro has put in a pretty decent amount of work to give these figures their alternate appearances, and it is greatly appreciated. So, uh, yeah, as I stated in my Hunter video, I wasn't sure whether they would do enough to justify a purchase. Um, but yeah, they indeed have. Very, very grateful for, for the work they've put in with these figures, um, particularly with Hunter, Wrecker so far. So looking forward to showing this one off. So again, sort of very going away from um, the sort of the dark greys and the reds of the Bad Batch he sort of incorporated some more earthy colours with some like almost green tans, like a beige undersuit there. He's still donning most of his armour, which is cool. Nothing wrong with that at all. It's taken out. His armor from the uh, torso there, and he's got himself a belt with a holstered weapon. Still carrying his big sheath's blade. Just, that's not a knife, that's a knife. That is a knife, that's a big, big knife. He has the same backpack, which is removable. That sits in there quite nicely. Still has the little flash of red on the back of the helmet there. He's gotten rid of the 99 over the top of the, the brow of the helmet. Pretty much got all the same armor pieces. The shoulder is a different piece, which is cool. Excuse me, I'm just gonna put the backpack aside. And uh, yeah, the holster which and belt, which I think is a nice piece. There's some nice details on there, some sort of bronzy golds, some silvers. So they haven't spared any expenses there. It looks nice. Even just to have these little capsules here with the slight little silver accents on it, I think is really nice. Through the back. Now the trick is holstering this weapon. This is This is different. Now I don't have the blaster from the original Wrecker, but I'm pretty sure this one is a little bit bigger. It feels chunkier than what I remember. I could be wrong. It um, it's a nice tight fit. Again, it's just um, yeah, with my other one, it's just in a box somewhere. <laughs> I got to dig it out. But I could be wrong. I do remember them being slightly different. Um. But either way, it's a nice, cool, big, chunky, chunky blaster for Wrecker. And uh, yeah, holstering it isn't easy. So we've got this little strap here. It comes around and will peg into there. And yeah, it took me a few goes to work out. We'll pop all the way through the back side there. Not that back side, the back side of the... <laughs> so, um... What I've discovered is if it goes through the trigger, you can actually sort of push it in and get a reasonable length of it through. It will sort of pop in and hold. And there's like a little notch where it'll sort of get through and that holds in quite nicely. And that's not going anywhere. 
it's a little bit tricky, but um, yeah, once you get it, it's good. It sits nicely. A little bit of movement there still, and you don't have to, it's not going to get in the way of his arms. He's got a pretty broad, broad set of shoulders anyway, so it's not going to get in too much way. So it just gives you the option to holster that and display him with the blade or, or whatever you want to do. So obviously removable helmet again for Wrecker. There's a nice snug fit on this one. And uh, yeah, pretty sure they've used the same head sculpt. We'll take a look at the other one. You've got that sort of trademark smirk. One eye whited out. The uh, sort of blast scars on the side of the head. He looks good. I really like Wrecker. I think this is a fantastic version of him. I, I'm really glad to have picked him up. Great with his uh, counterpart here. Let me zoom back out a little bit more. And we'll start taking a look at the uh, differences, similarities. I will pop off his helmet. So as you can see, not a great deal of differences there. It's slight different with the paint. He's just painted some more white over the top. It's redone the teeth. But yeah, it looks really good. So yeah, I reckon that's the same head. Oh, I need to no, no real need to change it anyway. Oh, the, probably the paint again with this one, the new one on the right there. It's just a nicer application of the paint, I think. Hasn't got the uh, sort of gloss and shine that this first wrecker has. Much like the Hunter, it's just a does have a little bit more of that sort of shading around the cheeks and chin sort of bit of five o'clock shadow or stubble but yeah definitely got that sort of gloss look whereas this one's a nice sort of flat flat look and just looking at the torso pieces they appear to be very similar but I'm noticing just in the sculpt there are some different Different scratched areas, different weathered parts to the armor. Sort of see there's a there's a scratch going straight across the middle there, whereas there it's on this one it's a bit lower. So yeah, that could be a well, yeah, looking underneath the sort of upper chest plate, it is different. So that's cool. Cause yeah, I didn't even didn't even start looking at the green until now. That sort of green sort of undershirt. So he's a uh, exchanged some of the armor for very much the same thing just uh, is modified that somehow it allows for probably a little bit more flexibility and movement obviously from the legs down it is all the same which is fine obviously finds enjoyment out of being heavily armoured and intimidating, which is cool. And the shoulder piece there is different. The rest of the armour seems to be the same. Just sort of through that middle area it's changed up. So that's cool. Nice to have these two side by side. So yeah, his articulation is as follows. He has a, a joint in the neck join in the head you get a nice look down look up good range of movement there really good actually uh, ball joints and butterfly joints in the shoulders you can kind of see that sort of inner shoulder butterfly joint poking through get good range of movement up it does have a hinge in the shoulders which is nice as well as the swivel up and down hinge in the wrists and a, and a swivel and an in and out hinge on this wrist with a swivel as well nice range of movement there at the torso joints at the hips upper thighs knees 
going for a good bend. Good range of movement there in the knees and the ankles with the hinge and the swivel at the feet for the rocker ankles. Awesome stuff. Really nice figure. Let's put his helmet back on. Which again is a nice snug fit. And get it to sort of embed itself into his armour there a little bit. He looks good. And the backpack slotting on nicely. And there we have Wrecker in his mercenary gear from Bad Bass Season 2. Now next up will be Echo, so stay tuned for Echo, and then Tech, and then at some point down the line we'll have Omega when she gets her release. Not sure why she didn't release with the rest of them, but um, yeah, either way. Still really great figure, really impressed with Wrecker. Glad Hasbro put in some work um, to make these sort of very stand out and different to their Season 1 counterparts. Um, yeah, hope you've enjoyed the review. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And we'll see you for some more Bad Batch coming this week. Until then, may the force be with you, always.